Hey everybody, it's Emily, the Crazy Worm Lady. I'm here today with the Urban Worm Bag. This is the version two that I set up with the um, existing contents from version one in hopes to um, upgrade to the new version that has a more efficient harvest panel and all of the upgrades. So as you recall, this system was almost full when I transferred everything over last week, but I really wanted to top feed rather heavy to get the worms to move all the way up so that we can get ready and get a harvest out of this uh, sooner rather than later since it is prime time for our garden. So I'm going to um, open this bag up. We'll take a peek and get these worms fed. Okay guys, so I took the lid back here and you can see um, there's a lot of condensation but there's no mites or anything which I get sometimes and no worms anywhere up on the edges, nothing like that. So they must be in with our feeding. I'm hoping they're doing really well. So gonna pull some of this back. It's very wet. Might leave the lid open for a day or two, but check that out. cocoon right there, some springtails, and just worms really thick through this area right here. Oh my gosh, guys, they're all throughout here. Let me zoom back out. Is it weird that I really like that sound that a ball of worms makes? Probably makes me weird, but that's okay. But this material is beautiful. They've worked up to this top part um, rather quickly. And what I'm really impressed with is how fast they're going through the food and how many worms I have. Since I had kind of neglected it, um, a lot of the worms were kind of spread throughout. And it does appear like the vast majority of the worms have moved right on up for us. So it's just everywhere we pull back. There's just worms, worms, worms. Oh my gosh, this is a huge, huge mass down here as well. You can just feel my fingers digging into nothing but worms. This could not be more fantastic. I am absolutely thrilled. I really am. It's teeming with life in here, but um, if you recall, I had put a lot of um, rice and you can see the rice gets some mold on it but they seem to be handling it fine it must not have heated heated it must not have gotten too hot uh for them i was a little bit concerned because grains can heat up in the bin you always want to be careful but it does appear like they handle it just fine but i am ultra ultra impressed the health of this bin is absolutely fantastic And you can just hear those worms everywhere I turn over. It's just, just chock full. So I think, oh my gosh, more. Absolutely fantastic. So we're going to level this out. We're definitely going to add a lot of, um, dry bedding today just because it is rather moist and I want to make sure the castings at the bottom don't get overly moist that the harvest is difficult. So we'll add a lot of dry bedding. We will add another nice heavy feeding again kind of all the way across the surface to encourage them to move up and I'm also going to do um, an update of the other version 2 which is a newer system not nearly as full as this one and we just started using a like a trash bin concept with the Vermi Bag Max, which is about the same size as an Urban Worm Bag. And that had about the same amount of material as the Urban Worm Bag version 2. So I'm thinking, why not do a side-by-side -side trash bin experiment? So we're going to get that one started as well as a trash bin. And then that will be the update for today. All right, so I added a nice layer of this dried... Um, leftover from sifted peat moss actually, using it for a little side project. Um, 
Again, I always say don't buy things if you don't need to for your worm bins. But for my cocoon project, I needed some peat moss. So this is the chunky stuff left over when I pre-sifted that out. So, um, I mean, I only put down maybe an inch or so. I want to keep the worms right up on top because next week I'm definitely going to do a harvest. And I have a nice blended mix of stuff here. Not all of it got completely blended. But I'm going to feed a little bit more. Pretty heavy in here. And I want to mix this kind of across the surface. This is an apple. I'll leave the apple over there. And this was um, frozen, thawed, and has been sitting on my counter fermenting before I got to blending it. But this bin is plenty wet, so that's why I wanted to make sure uh, I put some dryish bedding in here. So I'm going to add a lot of uh, crushed oyster shell. Um, I'm not going to use my dry mix today. I'm running low on it, and I need to get some new um, neem cake. But I'm going to put some oyster shell, and then we'll top it off. Okay, so a nice healthy layer of oyster shell across the top, and I'm just going to loosely cover with a little bit more of these spent uh, peat moss remnants. And I'm going to just loosely cover the beauty of the system as I can zip it completely shut. I don't have to worry about bugs finding their way in. We already have some springtails and things like that, but I'm not worried um, with zipping it shut as far as fruit flies or anything like that. So. We'll zip it up and let's go take a look at the other, the um, newer version two that we started a few months ago and I think I'm gonna turn it into a trash bin. Okay, so let's take a look in this urban worm bag. And this is the one that I'm going to turn into a trash bin like we are doing with the Vermi Bag Max. Since these guys are similar in size, I thought it would be fun to kind of do a comparison of how each one tolerates the trash bin man mentality. So let me um, get this pulled back, get the light down in here, and we'll take a peek, see what's going on, and get it fed. So I've got my trusty light in place, and I see some sprouts coming up over here. Ton of springtails. And I honestly don't remember what I fed. I do see some remnants of banana peels. And I see some beetles right away, actually, which is okay, but definitely not my favorite thing in the world. We must have done a large feeding in the middle here because it's very, um, I'm surprised actually not more of it's broken down, but it's kind of compact here in the middle. It's probably compact because I fed all in one spot. The good news is the moisture, even this very top, it's not crinkly, it's uh, moist, and that's what's so lovely about the Urban Worm Bag. It holds in the moisture so well that it's really difficult to dry out these systems. Um, but you can just see, once we get down here, these castings are absolutely gorgeous. All of my continuous flow throughs work beautifully. I couldn't be more pleased. Um, but I think we need to feed some more, kind of get this set up for one of our euros. I don't see them very often for a trash bin. Um, so we're going to do similar to what we did with the Vermi bag. If you missed that whole concept, Tom, the developer of the Vermi bag, decided to see what would happen if he ran his Vermi bag max like a trash can, just meaning that he throws in scraps whole, he throws in whole pieces of bedding without shredding or um, doing much to them, and has been seeing how it works. He's even tried cereal boxes, um, things like that with glossy print that a lot of times people say won't break down in a bin, but it seems to be relatively successful for him. So we do have a good deal of bedding already in here, but I'm gonna add a lot more and um, Similar to the vermi bag, I'm also going to be feeding only unfrozen food scraps. So, first thing I'm going to add here, I added something similar to the vermi bag. Literally, it's this huge, it's like a thicker 
cardboard, I don't even know what, what exactly it's called. Um, add that in here. I'm gonna put in some napkins from a fast food joint. Didn't wanna throw them out and I have plenty in my car already. Got a toilet paper or paper towel roll rather. And I have an egg crate. What I think is gonna be good in here is that since the moisture holds in well, it will um, kind of, as, as it heats up, the decomposition of the food, there will be a little bit of a moisture kind of circulating in the bin, which will keep some of these scraps moist. At least that's my, my hope, that these bedding pieces will stay moist as a result. So I am going to add a little bit of water, I think at the end, but I wanna see what I think once I add the food. So, got these for my neighbor. Looks like they're a little wrinkly. I guess that's why they got rid of it, but it was not frozen. Gonna do some celery like we did in the vermi bag. Just got that really limp and sad on me. Have some carrots. I intentionally am putting in a lot of these root vegetables unfrozen because I, I think they're gonna try to grow, but I wanna see how long it will take for them to start to break down. Have some carrots. These are dried out and wrinkly. All right. Then I have two bananas. Just like with the vermi bag, I'm heavily feeding intentionally to see how much these systems can really handle. I will bust these open a little bit because it will take a long time for them to break down otherwise. And I don't really consider that putting a whole lot of work in. Um, then I have two controversial items. I have kimchi, which I fed to my worms before and they were fine with it. So let's see, Some kimchi and take out rice. The takeout rice should be interesting because it dries out and becomes hard as a rock. So I'm interested to see if it will be able to stay moist enough to actually break down in here. But we will, ooh, <laughs> we'll see. So that is a ton of food. Beauty of the system is it can handle it. There are a lot of worms in here. They're not at the surface where they need to be. I'm hoping this might entice them up, especially with the banana being nice and, and um, sugary, just what they want. So I am gonna add a little bit of water. I'm gonna primarily put it in the egg crate and I will put a little bit over this heavy duty cardboard over here, kind of moisten everything down. I don't wanna overdo it but I also need enough moisture built up in here that it will do its job and keep everything wet so these worms can move up to it. I do have a catch tray underneath the urban worm bag in case all this liquid would run right through. I'm hoping it won't because um, there is a lot of bedding in here, but it is definitely a possibility. So if you're running one and you're doing something similar to this, just make sure you have a catch tray at the bottom. You can always even leave the zipper undone so that the water can run straight through if it needs to. But that's gonna be it for today, guys. It'll be interesting seeing our two trash bin or trash bag um, side-by-sides with the vermi bag and the urban worm bag. So let me know what you think. Drop those comments below, like this video, subscribe if you'd like some more content from me, and I'll be back with you guys real soon for an update. I hope you have a great day. Hey everybody, it's Emily the Crazy Worm Lady. I'm here today with the Urban Worm Bag. This is the new version two that I set up with the contents from the existing first version. So this is the up, uh, updated version with some upgrades on it for the harvest panel, uh, the double zippers, and 